you're watching WBZ, New England's Channel 4, next on Eyewitness News. A highly sensitive issue, Cardinal Law addresses how the Catholic Church will deal with allegations of child sexual abuse by priests. Police say she left her son behind in a Malden store, but this mother told the court those charges are false. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. On his birthday, the work of Martin Luther King Jr. is remembered by his widow. Now, live, this is Eyewitness News at Noon. Good afternoon, I'm John Henning. In the news at midday, Cardinal Bernard Law today made public the Boston Catholic Archdiocese plan for dealing with allegations of child sexual abuse by priests. The policy came about after the Channel 4 I team made public the story of former priest James Porter. Porter had admitted he molested as many as 100 children during the 1960s when he was a priest in the Fall River Diocese. The Archdiocese's new policy calls for a two-step process to handle complaints of sexual abuse. First, one of the two delegates appointed by Cardinal Law, a priest and a nun, will investigate. Then their findings will be forwarded to a nine-member review board made up of church officials, medical professionals, attorneys, and possible victims. And any action in the case would be left up to the Cardinal. Eyewitness News reporter Suzanne Bates is standing by with reaction from the Cardinal to this new policy. Well, John, the Cardinal really came here today to explain the policy, and it has met with some immediate criticism from people who felt, first of all, that the church should have a firm policy in writing that it would report these cases of sexual abuse to civil authorities. Today, when Cardinal Law was questioned about that, he said that in cases where the church is required to do so, it will. Otherwise, it will be up to the victim to do it. In any situation where mandated reporting uh, applies, that reporting will be complied with by the archdiocese. In those cases where mandatory reporting does not apply, the complainant will be told uh, of his or her right to make notice to public authorities. Cardinal also clarified another point in this policy that after an allegation of abuse is made against a clergyman that that priest will be removed while the investigation proceeds. However, it's still unclear whether clerics who are found to abuse children will be forced to leave the priesthood. Overall, this policy is seen by many as a positive step from the church, which did not even appear to publicly recognize sexual abuse as a problem even months ago. However, critics say that it is not going far enough in preventing cases like that of Father Porter's. John? Suzanne, did they talk about when, and when this would be reported to civil authorities if the church found out that one of the priests was acting in this way? It was really left unclear, John. In fact, there were many things about the policy that were rather unclear. Now, the news conference is still going on right now, so maybe some clarifications will be made. But Cardinal Law seemed to indicate that many of these procedures are procedures that were already in place and that they were simply formalizing them and then creating this review board. So it's not clear right now whether the victim would uh, be required to do the reporting if it was to be done, whether in some cases there would be a need for the nun or the priest who were initially the people reported to, or whether the review board itself would feel some uh, legal uh, need to report at some point. It's really not clear. All right, Suzanne Bates, thank you. Uh, maybe, as you say, as more information comes out, but at least it's out in the public uh, arena now, we'll know more about the process undertaken by the Archdiocese. Thank you, Suzanne. A strange development today in the trial of Kenneth Seguin. He is the Holliston man accused of murdering his wife and two children. The four-person of the jury told the judge today that a cousin of hers in California killed her two children more than a year ago while the cousin was on the anti-depression drug Prozac. Seguin took Prozac for a while before killing his family, but was off it at the time of the crimes. The jury in the case ruled that even though the four person, the judge rather in the case ruled that even though the four person discussed her cousin's case with another juror, they may still sit on the Seguin jury. A woman accused of abandoning her son at a store in Malden angrily denied the charge today. Using a jacket to hide her face, Colleen Just was in court in Hingham this morning on an earlier charge of illegal possession of a prescription drug. Police say she was shoplifting a coat at the Stewart's department store in Malden on Wednesday and ran out to her car, leaving her six-year-old son behind. 
A store executive says the boy was seen chasing his mother's car in the parking lot and was almost hit by another car. Ms. Just interrupted this morning's hearing to try to set the record straight. Ron, I want to tell you, like, I do not abandon my sons, all right? I want them TV to know that they put me on a TV and said I abandoned my son, and I did not. Ms. Just will answer the shoplifting and child abandonment charges later. The Department of Social Services placed her son in the custody of an aunt. Governor Weld is spending the day in Roxbury, a neighborhood he singled out in his State of the State address as an economic priority. Weld began the day at a breakfast meeting with business leaders. He said the Boston neighborhood has been left behind in terms of economic development. As we know in the that in the boom years of 84 to 88, uh, the community of color in, in the Roxbury area did not share uh, in the increase in wealth of the state. Uh, and I've, uh, I've committed myself to making sure that that doesn't happen again. The governor cited plans for a new registry building and a new police headquarters building to be constructed in the Roxbury neighborhood. But he also noted the two Massachusetts corporations, Digital Equipment and Stridewright, have recently decided to close their facilities in Roxbury. It took a Boston jury just a few hours to reach a decision in the trial of four men accused of killing Charleston Sargent. <laughs> Aristides Duarte, Adriano Barros, James Valoro, and Lamar Johnson all pleaded guilty, all were found guilty on first-degree murder charge. The prosecution contended the four randomly attacked and murdered Sergeant at a Dorchester fast food restaurant last April. Judge Robert Mulligan immediately handed down mandatory life sentences for the defendant. I'm contented because justice has been served. Are you surprised all four were found guilty of first-degree murder? No, because I have faith, and the right thing was done. Only one defendant, James Valero, has admitted to stabbing Charleston Sargent. Attorneys for the other men say they'll probably appeal the first-degree murder verdicts. The trial of three other defendants accused in that same murder is set to begin in March. A deadly fire this morning in Douglas took the life of an elderly woman. Firefighters were called to the blaze on Martin Lane in Douglas just before 6 o'clock this morning. Inside, they found 72-year-old Wanda Tredinick. They rushed her to Milford Hospital, where she was later pronounced dead. Her nephew, 42-year-old Ronald Michaud, jumped from a window and is now hospitalized in serious condition. A Douglas police officer, Ger Gerald Bupre, is hospitalized for smoke inhalation. No word on what sparked that fire. An accident in Chelsea, a truck apparently lost control coming down the Beacon Street off-ramp on the Tobin Bridge and slammed into a house. The driver says he lost his brakes, crashed through a barrier, and then went into an apartment house at the foot of the...